Hi, I'm Bruce Asia, and in this video, I'm going to be looking at Media Bay in Cubase. Now, Media Bay is a very powerful tool. It allows you to access all kinds of content within the Cubase framework. Um, essentially, it's a really good way, or it's most basic, it's a really good way of accessing a lot of the content that comes with Cubase, whether it be audio loops or presets or track presets, so ones that actually set up for different types of track recording or playback. Um, Media Bay also allows you to bring in your own audio content and explore your own audio loops or external audio content as well. And also it's a fantastic way of auditioning content before you actually load it into the project. So we're going to have a look at how all the different types of content can be extruded through Media Bay and into your projects for you to use. So we're back in the project window and we need to open the Media Bay window. Now I've got a key command that actually does that at the moment. It happens to be set up for F6. We can also access it through the media menu and we can look and see you've got media bay here there are actually different versions of media bay customized for different types of um, content so we have a loop browser and a sound browser now i think it's much better to look at media bay which includes all of those different things because essentially they're the same thing they've just been tweaked to reflect certain types of different content so look at let's look at media bay it's a slightly imposing window when you first look at it. You actually see you've got all these different files here. We have different areas of the window. We've got the file browser. So this is where it's going to be looking to find the content that you want to listen to, check out, analyze, or use in your track. We have this toolbar along the top, which allows you to set certain aspects of what it's found. For example, the types of media, we can actually search by keyword. We can search on ratings as well, so we can rate different presets or different bits of audio. We have different categories. Now this obviously relies on the actual content itself having been categorized. You can categorize your own content. So for example, you might add some loops to, uh, to be scanned by Media Bay and you might label it by genre or whatever it happens to be, but it's not done by default. It's something you would have to do. Content that's provided with Cubase actually comes ready categorized. So you can see we have different categories, subcategories, styles, substyles, character, key. And in fact, there are a whole load of other different things that we can search on. There's actually sub-menus within these, and there's a whole load of stuff that we can actually use for it. So excavating and trying to find what we're actually after. Underneath this window is the results. So in other words, the things that match the particular criteria that you're actually after. So for example, if I was looking for drum and percussion, it would say there are 7,000 results here. I could then look for beats, and already it's saying there are 1,000, oh no, it's found 2,316. You can then see there's already numbers appearing for the different styles, different, different styles here. So for example, if I say electronic dance, it cuts it in about half. So we're about to back down to 1,000, just over 1,000. And we can then go further and say, well, I want electro house, you know, uh, dub, whatever it happens to be, trap, trip hop, and so on. Um, let's choose something like classic house here, and we can then choose a character. Uh, so we can say modern, percussive, that seems slightly ironic, I think really, given that it's drums anyway, warm, clear, bright, and so on. So let's say warm, and obviously there's no key associated with it. Now, if you go here, you can see that actually what it's found is a bunch of MIDI loops. So this is in fact content that actually triggers MIDI events. Triggers, triggers parts playing, so audio or, um, or certain drum parts. And you can audition, so whatever you click on here, you can actually hear it play back. So, in fact, the important thing here is actually it includes loads of different types of media. If we look in this all media types box, and we click on the little drop down there, you will see that actually you can show only different types of media if you want to. You can navigate projects, video files, channel strip presets, effects chain presets. So whole effects chains all, all, all set up that you can load into specific channels. Plugin presets, so plugin, so presets you created for specific plugins. Track presets, which are whole setups for one particular type of track. So for example, if you've got an audio track and you're using it to play back vocals and you've got a particular um, chain of things you've set up and a lot of type of processing, so it might be plugins and it might be EQ and other kinds of things, it will load, it can load all of those in one go. 
pattern banks, MIDI playback um, patterns, MIDI loops, MIDI files, audio files, and so on. So there's a whole load of stuff. Um, I think Media Bay is really powerful when it comes to actually managing audio loops and things, as we'll see in a little bit. But also you can use it for auditioning types of um, sounds for synths and things like that. So actually what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna open this VST sound folder. And what's interesting here is it actually allows you to see lots of different content. And there's also, you'll notice this factory content folder here as well. So for example, if I wanna load um, VST3 presets, so this is be plugins, it'd be instruments and effects processes. I could look at lots of things there. I'm gonna reset the search box and then go back and actually think, well, okay, maybe let's look at some pad shop presets. Now the interesting thing here, pad shop being one of the built-in synths in, um, in Cubase, you can, from within this, without actually loading pad shop, you can access a preset. It takes a while. The reason it takes a while is because it's actually loading up an instance of pad shop. And I can actually choose that preset and then I can actually play the sound. And I can go through and try different presets and and it'll actually load the preset sound and allow me to play it. You can also use your QWERTY keyboard to actually, you can play the sound or I can just trigger on the pads here. You can even have it so it actually plays back, a little, you've got a little sequencer mode, you can actually play back certain sequences. Uh, and you can also set the audition level from this. So if you're using it whilst the project is playing, you can change the audition level there. Really interesting. If you right mouse click on it, you found a sound you like, you can then create a track and if I press that create track, what it then does, it takes that preset and it actually loads a track. So in this case, it'd be an instrument track and it loads an instance of pad shop and actually creates a track ready for me to add notes and play along to what I've got there already. So that's instrument presets accessed from within Media Bay. Let's open the Media Bay window again. And you can see it actually includes a whole load of stuff. It, it actually, in fact, includes loops, and this is just the factory content. If we go to this here, we have a bunch of loops and MIDI content. We have Retrolog presets. What I'm gonna do now is actually explore one other area, which I think is particularly interesting um, in terms of auditioning sounds uh, and content ready for using the project. And that is with audio files. And actually this time I'm gonna just limit myself. I'm gonna untick that and just choose just audio files. And hopefully, that will then come back and we've now got just audio files being scanned. And I can actually choose, go up to a higher level and choose all the audio files within this VST sound folder. The VST sound folder is essentially the factory content or other Steinberg products you've actually loaded. They all have this unified labeling and they all appear in the VST sound folder. And you can see it's showing WAV files here for right across different styles and different categories. And if I click on any of them, it actually plays them. Now the interesting thing here is, if I press play, you'll notice straight away that it's actually playing in sync with the tempo of the project. So what Media Bay is doing, it's actually applying time stretching so that what you're auditioning actually appears with the same timing as the, as the actual project itself. Now this obviously bear in mind that if, um, if the tempo is vastly different from your project tempo, sometimes it's gonna sound a little bit gnarly um, because there's quite a lot of time stretching going on. But actually, even if it does sound a little bit funny when you're auditioning, it, when you import it, I'll show you this in a bit, you can actually tweak the time stretch setting so it can actually improve the sound of it. So it will sound a lot better once it's running with the track. Let's try and find something that will work with what we've already got. Now hopefully that will work with our bass line. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just press play. Now you can see that this tempo is labeled as 132, but the project is 105. Now if I move, change the project tempo, you'll see the drums speed up. So that's all done automatically. The important thing to realize is that it's these little, these little icons over here, which are sort of 
hidden away. We've got wait for project play, which means it'll actually wait for you to press play on the project for it to start playing back that loop. Uh, align beats to project. If I click that, you'll notice that the grid lines change position. That means that when it does play, the loop then is playing at its original tempo 132, not the project tempo. So I'm gonna keep that in. And then you'll auto play new results, which means that as soon as I click on that, it starts playing it. So altogether, some very, very powerful functions in there. Um, the reason my, why you might not want to have that um, align beats to project enabled is perhaps when you're using single hits and things like that, you know, a crash cymbal or whatever it happens to be, or a particular vocal sample. You don't want it to be in time. You want it to play back as it originally did. In that case, you'll disable that. So now I've got that loop going, what I can then do is I can click on the right and right mouse click on it, I can send it to a sampler, but actually what I, could, what I might want to do, which is probably more useful in this case, is I can actually insert it into the project. And I can choose where it goes, I'm going to say at cursor, at left locator, or at origin. Let's choose at left locator, which is going to be, means it will line up properly, hopefully, with the loop. I've clicked on that, now I come out of Media Bay. It's important you come out of it, particularly if things are highlighted in there and they're set to play, otherwise you'll get it playing even in the background. And I can see that my drums that I've just had, I've highlighted in Media Bay are now in the project. And when I play, they're playing in time and I can change the volume as you'd expect. Now, the thing I mentioned before is that obviously when it's auditioning, there are different time stretch modes that are applied and the time stretch mode that's applied in Media Bay is one that maintains the pitch. So it doesn't change the pitch, it doesn't slow anything down in the same way that with vinyl or tape, when you slow it down, it changes the pitch. But actually one of the most, I don't know, interesting things I find is that actually to maintain an interesting kind of um, integrity to the sound, in other words, there's no extra processing going on, is when you actually click on the audio part and you can choose the type of algorithm that's being used. And these elastic um, algorithms are, are the best ones to use. There's also these standard ones, which are kind of more old school in terms of going back to earlier days of Cubase. And you can choose these different Elastic Pro uh, algorithms. Now, the one that's been used here, um, normally it would be, would be pitch or time. In other words, it stretches, it, it's optimized time stretching for keeping it in time for rhythmic material or pitch for pitch material. But if you choose tape, it speeds it up and slows it down and changes the pitch. I'm going to solo this and show what goes, what, what happens when you do this. If I slow it right down, you can see it's like playing a piece of vinyl or a piece of tape much, much slower. Um, obviously there's a time and a place for each different algorithm, but actually I find for drum elements, particularly if there's something that's not, that's not specifically pitched in there, I think it can deliver sometimes uh, drums a little bit more impactful. It's not doing some additional processing, which can sometimes make it sound a little bit problematic. And that for me is one of the modes that I think is really useful and is very easy to access within Cubase. So that, that can be really useful. If I go to the original tempo of that drum loop, 132, and play it back, there'll be no time stretching going on at all. So it'll be optimized for the way in which the audio loop was originally recorded. And I can play it back. And it sounds as you'd expect. And of course I can then treat that audio. Now it's been imported into the project. I can treat it in any way I want. I can manipulate it. I can chop it into pieces. I can reverse different elements and do whatever. And it won't affect the original content in Media Bay. Media Bay is merely a way of searching out that material and then accessing it and bring it in. It makes a copy and actually bring it into the Cubase project. You can tweak Cubase if you really want to and actually set it so it doesn't copy content over and, um, and that can certainly cause problems. So try and avoid that in the presets. The best thing to do is make sure that, um, that it's actually set to the default. It's allowing, it's automatically copying the audio into your project folder and then you can do whatever you want to that particular material. So coming back to Media Bay, um, as I said before, you can also access a whole load of different types of presets. It can be quite confusing because it does talk about and it does mention lots of different types of content. So you could search on a keyword, and if you just say, if you're using, if you're searching on all media types, and you just say drums, 
you'll see that you come up with a whole load of other stuff in different categories, but in fact, what it might include, you've got beats, you might find that it comes up with a whole load of other stuff as well uh, across a whole load of different categories. Um, so that's why you might want to certainly limit it to certain types of preset. Uh, and that way you might go, well, okay, I'm just going to choose track presets and well, let's take those out and just choose track presets here and see what comes up there. In fact, it comes up with one of them. So this is this Fabric Drums Atmo and basically it's a track preset. In other words, it's a way in which track is set up um, and there's obviously some kind of processing going on there. And we can then load that into the project as well. So very, very powerful can be confusing to begin with. The best thing is just to get in there and play around and choose different things and see what goes on. Um, also, I should mention that it's, it's worthwhile if you've got a big loop library and you want to access some of those separate to Cubase, and you want to bring your loops in and integrate them with Cubase, it's a really great way of doing that. But you do need to make sure that the folder where those loops are, are stored is actually set up in this right-hand window here. So there we have Media Bay in Cubase, this very powerful tool which allows you to integrate a whole load of different media types. Um, you can tag content, you can search on content, you can drag content into the project window, you can do a whole load of different things. It's certainly worth exploring if you really want to get the most out of Cubase, particularly the factory content.